I'm the Lord Bishop to be with you today. Uh, I want to share with you the Word of God today. And uh, I want to share with you a passage on James chapter 1. Uh, James chapter 1. And I want to camp on this as the Word of God. And uh, we read these words. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, James, a servant of God. And for, for, for James, uh, the main thing was to think about God, who God is. And who, how great God is. And the Bible is really a book about God. It's God's story, really. We read in the Bible, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, so the Bible talks a lot about God. God is the center. God is in the center of the whole history of the Bible. God created everything. Uh, God created Adam and Eve. Uh, God was working in history, judging in history. And God was just doing working throughout history. He brought the flood, if you remember, he brought the flood on the wicked people. Uh, the Tower of Babel, when they, when they built that tower, God brought it down, uh, and God brought judgment on it. And so, it, the Old Testament, uh, you see these prophets, and these prophets are talking about God. You see in Isaiah chapter 6, where uh, the prophet Isaiah sees the holiness of God, he says, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, sorry, in Isaiah chapter 6, where he talks about holy, 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 God is a holy God, God is a great God, and uh, in Mark chapter 1, we see the prophet John, and it, and it says, make way straight for the Lord, so, they're all thinking in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. They're all thinking about God. James, a servant of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. James, a servant of God. And we as a society, and individually, and in our families, we've kind of shrunk God. We've kind of shrunk Him. Our vision of God is small now. Our vision of God is very, very small. What what God is and who He is has, has gone out of our uh, consciousness as a nation and individually. We've kind of shrunk God. God's become small in our society, small in our culture, and that's why we have the mess that we have in society. Because. Society's taken their eyes off God. We've taken our eyes off God. There's no fear of God in their eyes. There's no fear of God anymore. There's no respect for God anymore. There's no desire for His glory anymore. His honor anymore. We can see that on the Sabbath day. We don't honor the Sabbath day. The, the, the Sabbath day today, whether it be a Saturday or Sunday, whichever you want to choose, we, we don't respect God because we show that in the Sabbath day. We show that the way we have the Sabbath day. We don't bother anymore. It's not an important day anymore in our collective consciousness because our vision of the one true God, Yahweh, the Trinitarian God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, our vision of this God has been lost. And all of us have lost this vision of God and because of that, we've made laws that dishonor God. We've made laws that Parliament have made that, to be honest, God is disgusted with. But we as a society say better, that we know better, but yet God's disgusted with some of the laws that we've made. He's disgusted with them. Because they say, he says it in his word, the Bible. He says it in the word there. He tells you what's right and wrong. Yet we as a society, show that we don't have respect for God anymore 
because we don't honour him anymore. We're not making laws that honour him. They don't, they don't make laws to bring glory to God anymore. We don't make laws to honour the, the majesty of God and the glory of God. We, we allow filth and immorality to come in because our minds have taken away from God. And it says here, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you and I, if we are to have hope in our society today, and if we are to have hope in our own lives, the first thing that we have to learn is there is a God. He's the one true God who created the universe. He's the one true God who is alive today, has made the universe, and is your creator, and he beckons you into rela a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. God beckons you into that relationship. And a society, an individual, or a society, or even a family, that take their eyes off God, and shrink God, God bless you, and shrink God, and reject God, is a society that is running not only blind, but is on a suicide mission to destruction. A society that rejects God, a society that tramples on God's word and tramples on God's, God's law, is a society that is on a suicide mission to oblivion. And it's important as a society that we quickly recover our understanding of the one true God. It's important as a society and individually that we revive as a nation under the banner of Yahweh. It's so important that we do that because if we don't then things are only going to get... Did you watch the news the other day? Teenagers, teenagers, this is how we become as a society, listen to this, four to five teenagers throwing powder on a woman who's mentally disturbed on a bench and they were laughing at her and not only laughing at her, they videoed it and put it on video. That's where we become a society. That's a mirror of us as a society. And he's just fooled at me. That's the mirror of the society that we've become. That those teenagers threw powder on that girl, that woman, and she was mentally ill, and they put it on video. That's where we become today as a society. No respect for one another. No respect for the elders. Because we've lost our vision of God. We've lost our vision of God. We've lost our vision of God, my friend. When you've lost the vision of the greatness of God, there's no respect for the police, there's no respect for the army, there's no respect for politicians. When you've lost your vision of God, the politicians couldn't organize a barbecue. They couldn't organize a barbecue, the politicians today. Why? Because they've got no moral fiber. They've got no moral strength. Why? Because they've taken their eyes off God. Do you know in the Second World War, the King of England called a day of prayer at the day of Dunkirk. And he called a day of prayer when the soldiers were trapped at Dunkirk. And it just so happened that the weather turned dark so the could not sweep down on our troops and kill them. It just so happened. It didn't just so happen. The, the nation had a day of prayer. They called upon their God and God made that weather bad so that Luftwaffe could not sweep down upon our troops and so that their boats could come and save them off Dunkirk, my friend. My friend, I'm calling you today back to your God. I am calling Manchester back to our God. I am calling the nation back to our God.
I'm calling the nation, I'm calling the politicians today, I'm calling the MPs today. You couldn't organize a barbecue. The best thing that the MPs could do is go and get a job in McDonald's. And the judiciary is a joke. The judiciary allows rapists to go to prison and they come out sooner than someone who's a bit of bread from a shop. That's the madness of our society today. The law doesn't punish the criminal today. It punishes the ordinary man and woman on the street, but it doesn't punish the real criminals who do the real damage. And what about, what about the asses attack on a little kid of five years, five years of age? A little boy. An acid attack on a little boy. That's where we become as a nation. An acid attack should be seen as absolutely disgusting and we should be in uproar as a nation. But we're not in an uproar anymore, you know why? Because we've taken our eyes off God. We've taken our eyes off God. And God is no longer important in our eyes. And so, when a little boy had an acid attack, we're not in an uproar as a nation anymore. Fifty years ago, we'd have all been down at Parliament screaming our heads off if a little kid got attacked with an acid attack. But not today. Because it's happening so much in London. Acid attacks are happening all the time now. You see, we've sunken so low that we don't know how far we've sunken. You can't even fly the British flag or the St. George Cross in our own country. That's how low we've flown to this nation. That's how far we've gone low in our nation. We're so blind that we don't even know we're blind. We have people on the streets here like this. They shouldn't be on the streets. The authorities should sort it out, but no, they don't sort it out. You know why? You know why? Because rather than telling the truth, they, they give us social workers. Less social workers who don't know what they're doing. They'd rather slap a fine on a father than get something properly sorted out. You see, we are a nation blind. We're blind because we've lost our image of God. The God of Abraham and I, you know, the God of this nation, do you know who helped stop the slavery in this nation? Do you know who helped to stop slavery in this nation? They don't teach this in the schools of colleges. Did they teach this in the schools of colleges? Do you know who stopped slavery in this nation? William Wilberforce. William Wilberforce. Livingston. And John Newman who wrote Amazing Grace. What are they? Leftist Marxists? No. Born again Christians. Born again Christians. My friends, you as a nation, we as a nation, we as a city, we've turned the wrong way. We've turned the wrong way. And this liberal elite morality that everybody's gone down, it's going to collapse and explode in their faith. Their political correctness is going to blow up in their face, my friend. With mock You see, more anarchy. And this political correctness will blow up in their face. But you and I need to turn our eyes upon God. In the moral chaos, we need to find our way back to God. In the moral chaos, we need to turn to God. As politicians, in the moral chaos, you need to find your way back to God. The judiciary in this country need to find their way back to God. And the media, the media is an absolute disgrace. The media, the BBC, the Channel 4, Sky TV, they're an absolute disgrace. They should have their licenses taken off. We're not telling the truth anymore on the media. Everything you're told on the media is fake news, my friend. Truth has been lost on the streets. We've lost truth. 
We don't know what truth is anymore. We've lost it. The universities today are postmodern hotbeds of Marxism on our university campuses where they are pumping out their political correctness on the university campuses and not allowing anybody to have free speech anymore. That's on our university campuses today. No free speech even on our university campuses. People who are left, who are feminists, like Jimmy here, kick off the university campus, would you believe me? <laughs> We have lost our sense of truth. We have lost our sense of truth. We have lost our direction as a nation. But I'm calling you young people back to God. Back to God. Back to Yahweh. Back to the living God, my friend. But lots of good things happen to you, bro. Right, I can give you two things that have happened to you today that are good. Number one, you've met me. And number two, I've read you a verse that says, James, the servant of God, that's a blessing to you, bro. Put your eyes on God, and God will bless you. Always put your eyes on God, and it's nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you. I'm not angry at you. I love you. And because I love you, I'm telling you the truth. But you need to focus on God as a nation. We need to focus on God as a city. We need to focus on God. How much is God mentioned in Manchester? How much is God mentioned in the concerts of Manchester? When we have concerts, concerts. How much is God mentioned there? How much is God mentioned in the town councils? How much is God mentioned in the town councils? City Council. You see, we've lost our God. And it's a tragedy to see it. It's a tragedy to see it. It's a tragedy to see it. God bless you. It's a tragedy. God is weeping right now for you. God is crying right now for you. God is weeping. He's weeping and bleeding and he's bleeding his heart. That he sees the, the devastation, the moral devastation that the Enlightenment has created. When you said that you would create a new heaven on earth in the 19th, 17th century, you said that you would create a heaven on earth and you've not created a heaven on earth. you created hell on earth. We modern man have created hell upon earth. That's what we've done. We've created hell on earth. Plundering nations for their oil. Bombing people in Iraq, bombing people in Syria, where it's, it's no business of ours. And we've created hell on earth. We've created hell on earth. But God is calling us back. Back to Him. Back to the Word of God. Reading these words. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to wake you up. I'm here to wake you up before it's too late. Before it's too late, my friend. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to lift you up. To lift him up and to help you. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help you to have your eyes open and to see the need to put your God in your life. To receive salvation and grace from Him and to receive all that God has for you today in the name of Jesus Christ. To receive the blessings of Christ and the blessings of Jesus who died on the cross for you. It says, I will lift up my eyes into the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer the foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going and thy coming in from time forth or forevermore. 
I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. You see, it's all about God. It's all about His glory. It's all about His honor. It's all about the glory of God and the honor of God. It's about His name and His and lifting Him up, my friends. That's what it's about. Are you honoring God today? Do you live for God today? Do you love God? Are you living for God today? Do you honor God in your household? Does His Word stand tall in your house? Does the Word of God stand in your house today? Do you stand the Word of God in your home? Is the Word of God central in your life? Central in your family? Central in the work that you do? Is the Word of God central? Are you a servant of God today? Are you serving God humbly? Serving Him with all your heart, serving Him in whatever He wants you to do. Serving Him and living for Him. Are you serving God today? Or are you serving yourself? Is it all about your fame, about your glory, about your money, about your this, that and the other? It's all about you. Or are you living for the glory of God? Are you living for the glory of God? Whose glory are you living for? Whose glory are you living for? And when you live for the glory of God, you submit to the Word of God. You submit to the Word of God. You don't mix and play around with the Word of God. Too many today play around with the Word of God. They're watering down the Word of God. They're mixing the Word of God with the world. They're trying to change the Word of God. They're trying to water down the Word of God. But if you're a servant of God, then you stand on the pure Word of God. You don't change the Word of God. You stand on the Word of God. You don't mix the Word of God with the world. You don't play around with the Word of God. You stand on the pure Word of God. Too many in the nation, too many in the church, too many today are watering down the Word of God. Sexual immorality. Watering down sexual immorality with the Bible. Watering down what the Bible says about marriage. Watering down what the Bible says about abortion. And they're watering down the Word to suit today's morality and society. But if you're a servant of God, you stand on the Word of God. If you're a servant of God, you do not play around with the Word of God. You stand on the pure Word of God and you never ever compromise the Bible. You never ever compromise the Word of God. But you stand on the Bible. And you don't allow the nation, you don't allow the church, you don't allow the culture to corrupt your mind and to water down the Bible. You stand on the Word of God. Like a man of God, like a woman of God, you stand strong on the Bible. You stand strong on the Word of God. And you do not compromise in an age of compromisation. You do not compromise in an age of immorality. Yeah. Yes, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah.
Wait, don't go away. Uh, if, what, what you've said is me. Everything, everything you've said, everything you said, I agree with you. But I went, I went on and out with Bound Force once. Right? I went on and out with Bound Force. And we had two teams. One team, and it was raining in the mountains. It was rain was coming down. Where was this? This was in the latest one. In, in Estelle. Estelle. As the storm was coming, one team just got their tent on, the other team was messing about and arguing and whatever. They never got the tent. It's like today. But the lesson is, if you don't put the tent up, you're not going to achieve anything at all, even in the storm. Now we're in a storm, a moral storm, what you're describing. Some of what us. What do you mean? Are you saying this now with like. What you just described. No, you just. No, you just described it. You described it. That we're, the world that we're living in, you told me perfectly. Yeah. That world, and you're saying, well, why are you doing this? What's the point of it? It's a waste of time. This no, is the world we're living in. Right? Well, you turned around, right? You said many occasions, but you think you're so. Yeah. So, oh, it's a bit of food. Yeah. So now we get paid back now for all the work they don't make. Yeah. Basically, but, and our own sin, but, but, but our own sin as well. They got told not to take that, and they had to have it. Yeah, yeah. It was like because I'm being told that I shouldn't because then it makes me all the more want to. So basically, people, yeah, in general, it's hard to like thought about how people's actions are and like the way that they look at things. You know, they always want something of somebody what somebody else has got. They always want something that they shouldn't be having, but then they have to have it. And it could be the most serious thing in the world. The most thing that we define as being, you know, not anything special, but yeah, yeah. yeah. because you told you can't have it, you yeah. want it. I want that water. So what's I'm that? Tell you? What's I'll that drink your water. Well, let's say you've got a wife. Somebody else looks at her. Are you, you say you not. say to your mate, <laughs> my wife, you go off on the holiday. More on they water because you go you go off for six months it's on a holiday, it's an and isn't it? your wife's there. What's going on? They want to try and try yeah. and help them. Yeah, that's what the Bible calls The attraction sin. is more like, not, not in the fact of fancy, but the fact of being told that you shouldn't yeah. touch my well, life. That, well, that's what the lesson is. Turn this off, man.